The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom should I dread? When those who do evil draw near, they stumble and fall. Good morning. <clears throat> Let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. As we prepare ourselves this morning, let us take a moment to call to mind our sin and to ask our God for his mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. Ahab sent to all the children of Israel and had the prophets assemble on Mount Carmel. Elijah appealed to all the people and said, How long will you straddle the issue? If the Lord is God, follow him. If Baal, follow him. The people, however, did not answer him. So Elijah said to the people, I am the only surviving prophet of the Lord, and there are four hundred and fifty prophets of Baal. Give us two young bulls. Let them choose one, cut it into pieces, and place it on the wood, but start no fire. I shall prepare the other and place it on the wood, but shall start no fire. You shall call on your gods, and I will call on the Lord. The God who answers with fire is God. All the people answered, Agreed. Elijah then said to the prophets of Baal, Choose one young bull and prepare it first, for there are more of you. Call upon your gods, but do not start the fire. Taking the young bull that was turned over to them, they prepared it and called on Baal from morning to noon, saying, Answer us, Baal. But there was no sound and no one answering, and they hopped around the altar they had prepared. When it was noon, Elijah taunted them, Call louder, for he is a god and may be meditating, or may have retired, or may be on a journey. Perhaps he is asleep and must be awakened. They called out louder and slashed themselves with swords and spears, as was their custom, until blood gushed over them. Noon passed and they remained in a prophetic state until the time for offering sacrifice. But there was no, not a sound, no one answering and no one was listening. Then Elijah said to all the people, Come here to me. When the people had done so, he repaired the altar of the Lord that had been destroyed. He took twelve stones for the number of tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the Lord had said, your name shall be Israel. He built an altar in honor of the Lord with the stones and made a trench around the altar large enough for two measures of grain. When he had arranged the wood, he cut up the young bull and laid it on the wood, filled four jars with water, he said, and poured it over the burnt offering and over the wood. Do it again, he said, and they did it again. Do it a third time, he said, and they did it a third time. The water flowed around the altar, and the trench was filled with water. At the time for offering sacrifice, the prophet Elijah came forward and said, Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God and Israel, and that I am your servant, and have done all these things by your command. Answer me, Lord. Answer me, that this people may know that you, Lord, are God, and that you have brought them back to their senses. 
the Lord's fire came down and consumed the burnt offering, wood, stones, and dust, and it lapped up the water in the trench. Seeing this, all the people fell prostrate and said, The Lord is God, the Lord is God. The Word of the Lord. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord are you. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. They multiply their sorrows who court other gods. Blood libations to them I will not pour out, nor will I take their names upon my lips. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. O Lord, my allotted portion and cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. You will show me the path to life, fullness of joys in your presence, and delights at your right hand forever. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Teach me your paths, my God, and guide me in your truth. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with and your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord, to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law, until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Elijah, the last surviving prophet of the Lord. So he's not coming from a big group of prophets. There aren't others like him. And there's really nothing that spectacular about his life. He's a pretty uh, simple and humble man who doesn't do a lot to attract <clears throat> the attention of the people. It's a big contrast to the prophets of Baal, who are many in number, who are very flashy in the things they do, and very glamorous in the way they present themselves, and much more attractive to the people than this one prophet Elijah. They look to the prophets of Baal as <clears throat> everything they think they should be aspiring to in their lives because that's just what looks good to them, like where their lives should be. When we hear about Baal or we hear about the, the various Baals that the people follow and worship, it's such a great metaphor. <clears throat> for all the things that can distract us, that can look flashy and attractive, that look like where we need to be to make our lives what they should be. And it becomes easy to see how the people were lured by these prophets. But Elijah has a very simple message. In everything that these prophets did, in everything that they made the people believe, when it came down to it, there was no substance to what they were teaching. They just weren't able to produce anything from what they were offering to the people. 
that it turned out to be just a big show. Elijah, on the other hand, who offers his sacrifice to the Lord when the fire comes down, and it's not because of anything that he did, but because of the Lord. Because in his humility and his simplicity and poverty of his life, he held fast to the Word of God. He continued to trust in God. And he set the perfect example for the people that if they want to know their God, it's not going to happen by following all these flashy, attractive people who do great, fantastic things with their lives. It's simply holding true to the Word of God. And it's a very similar message to what Jesus is telling his apostles. I come not to abolish the law, but to fulfill. Not one letter or the smallest letter will pass from the law until all these things have come to pass. Basically, he's telling them that the, the law that has been given to them comes from the Word of God. This is the Word of God speaking to them in their lives so that they may know Him. And they may want something different. They may want to see this change to fit their life in some way, the way they think their lives should be. But that's not going to happen because this is the Word of God. And if we truly want to know Him, if we want to be in a relationship, we want our lives to be fulfilled as they should be, then that's where we need to be. Simply trusting in the Word, the word of God. Despite all the glamours of this world that can so easily <clears throat> distract us and make it seem that that's where we should be, where we really need to be is simply finding rest in the Word of God. Trust in His Word. And let him show us how to bring our lives to fulfillment. Let us stand and come before our Lord, offering him our prayers and petitions. For the church, may the Lord preserve and protect her. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of our world, may the Lord nourish them in virtues of selfless service. We pray to the Lord. Lord for all who are suffering, may they know of God's loving embrace. We pray to the Lord. Lord for St. Anne's community, may we have the grace to persevere in faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord for those who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, including Charles Mansfield, for whom this Mass is offered. May they rest in eternal peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear these prayers we bring as we present these and all our intentions. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. 
fruit of the vine and the work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for all the good and the good of all his holy church. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you, and lead us to grow in charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to supper, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that, by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of the Gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis our Pope and Barry our Bishop, the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my room, but only say a word, and my soul shall be.
God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God in him. Let us pray. May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil, and lead us to what is right, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Please be seated.